Ari Mirov. He's got a pretty good account if you like uh, info on the NFL. Last three weeks, one in five Jets over the Bengals, one in six Jags over the Bills, two in six Giants over the Raiders, two in seven Dolphins over the Ravens. That was Monday night. And then today, two and six Washington over the Bucks. So a lot of teams are showing flaws and a lot of bad teams might be getting better or they might be getting breaks. But like this is the time of year, talked about like the way they talk in New England, hey, after Thanksgiving or what, whatever it was, you kind of become who you are, the real teams come out. Of course, I was butchering that and saying after Halloween. I'd go back to New England and be like, if I ever works like, if I was ever on a, a game crew, I'd go back and do the production meeting with Bill and I'd, I'd totally butcher that and just embarrass myself as good I have a podcast. One thing that's pretty obvious right now is that uh, we have no idea who's gonna win the Super Bowl. Like, and I think that's pretty damn cool this late in a season. We don't usually have that. We have an idea usually and the field is kind of deep right now. And this list tells you all these good teams, quote unquote good teams with good records have flaws. So like I jotted down 10 of them. You tell me if I'm missing any, but Cardinals, Bucks, Rams, Chargers, Ravens, Bills, Titans, Packers, Cowboys, and Pats too, right? After today for sure. And listen, I'm maybe forgetting somebody. I'm not saying these guys are all equal odds to win the Super Bowl, but you get the idea that these are the best teams in the league. First off, the Cardinals, they got to figure this uh, this Kyler Murray thing out. And I'm only I'm not as good to as, overreact. Only as, you're only as good as your weakest link. And like at the end of the day in the NFL, like your backup quarterback, the person that rarely anyone thinks about, believe it or not, is what you're dependent on yeah, because well, yeah, and, worst case scenario like this, the Cardinals, yeah. your starting quarterback's hurt. Even if you need him to take one game off, you have to be able to count on the backup to run the offense and keep things going for a potential comeback or maybe he needs to rest or whatever it is. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fucking, we, we, we learn every week when guys have to pop up and make spot starts, you, you kind of see the bottom end of a team's potential based on this worst case scenario. And I think what, what makes it worse for the Cardinals is they built the offense around Kyler. Yes. So like when, when he's out, but it's also, it's not, it's not necessarily that it's built around Kyler It's just that he's such a dynamic athlete mm -hmm. that the backup can't make the same plays that Kyler can make. He can't make the same plays. He can't open up things the same way. Um, it doesn't mean he can't make the same throws, but he's also not going to de demand the same respect from defenses. Um, he's not going to demand the same respect from defenses as Kyler Murray will yeah. when he's yeah. in. Well, no, but I'm just saying that the offense is legitimately, a lot of the stuff they run is predicated on your quarterback being able to be Kyler. And so when Colt comes in, like it just changes not only the quality of the player, but down to like, you know, the scheme fit. And I mean, you saw it. Colt McCoy looked great last week against uh, the, the, the Niners. They've kind of owned the Niners. We said that. I gave out the, I gave out the Panthers today uh, because of that. I thought we overvalued them coming off that game. And so like Colt McCoy looks good there, but down 14, nothing pressed today. You get rolling right mm. across your body. Like one of the biggest fucking throws I've ever seen. Like when the heat is on and that great team isn't, isn't kind of like moving things along in sequence, it's hard to be the quarterback. And so they got to figure out the Kyler thing you had late last year. You had the shoulder thing. It didn't look like a big deal. It dragged on for a while. I don't know what's going to happen with this ankle thing. And it's undeniable that when you have an athletic quarterback who takes risks and who hasn't proven, like Lamar, that you know he knows how to like take himself out of harm's way. And I'm not, it's not a shot, it's I respect him. He's fearless. But uh, the reality is he's gonna use his legs a lot. Probability-wise, he's gonna get hurt sometimes. And so they gotta figure that thing out because everything is so inextricably tied to him. It's kind of like live by the three, die by the three in basketball, but I don't know what you would really call it like with that for like running quarterbacks and having your quarterbacks being susceptible to injuries yeah. and in yeah. this situation, even if it's banged up, not really injuries, needing maintenance. Yep. You can't need maintenance if you don't really have anyone to back it up. If you don't have anybody to back it up. Yeah. The Bucks. I mean, like, listen, they got problems right now. They lost today. They got corners. 
uh, a big problem for them, their secondary, the Rams. I mean, like, they just got beat up by the Titans, and then you've got the uh, Odell thing, which is good news, but you lose Robert Woods, who, who's probably more important to them than Odell. Odell's an unknown commodity, you know, for that team. And it's also a different position. So you assume you've got this, this workflow uh, with the receiving core there, and now it's different. And you lose the Sean Jackson. So the Chargers, they just lost to the Vikings. I don't even want to talk about the Chargers today. I don't want to talk about the Vikings today. You know I'm on the wrong side of that in the win total. No, thank you. The Ravens <laughs> lost to the Dolphins, man. Come on. Bills. What? Yeah, dude. See, like. Where have you been? Bro, like, it was the latter end. I just f- finished turkey season. Bro, and it is not. Or it's l- like you're going to jury duty. It's jury duty. You, like, they sequester you to kill these turkeys, man. <laughs> It's just a lot. It's just it's just a lot, a whole lot going on. But I'm done with it, so I could be more yeah. engaged. Yeah, the and, and and I'm and I'm upset that this week a lot of dogs actually won. Okay, uh, the Ravens lost to the Dolphins the other night, and Joe Biden won the election a few months back. <laughs> so I just want to make sure you get that too. I uh, <laughs> I um they double mugged like every play, and uh, the Ravens couldn't get guys open, and it was just like a masterful game plan. But you know, like that's what Sports Center's for. So <laughs> check it out. All these teams got issues. The Bills just lost to the Jags. Titans, Packers, hottest teams in the league. They're banged up right now. We'll talk about that. Cowboys are hot. They got Gallup back. They got Dak back. They're trending in the right direction. Dak looked healthy today. The Pats. The Pats are the same way. They're trending up. So I'm looking at the Cowboys and the Pats. They got the least question marks when things are rolling for them. And right now, things are rolling for other teams like the, the Packers and the Titans, but they're banged up. You got questions. The Pats, man, half game back in the, uh, in the East. I bet the Pats to go over on the win total. I think it's like nine and a half. And those odds are dicey. What are they at right now? They were at like minus 140 wins. or something. Yeah, they're, I don't know. They're trending they're up. They're at six wins. But I mean, what I'm saying is like, I believe in the Pats, but I'm surprised by this. People said early in the year, I think a couple people, I can't remember who to credit here in the media, were like, hey, the Pats are going to win that division. I think Dave Damashek said they were going to come back and win the East. And I was kind of like, yeah, dude, I like that, but I don't have the balls to say that. I, I just don't. Not at that point early in the year. Talking about what you see, the QB has gotten better. They're kind of rolling. The defense is coming into form. I've seen enough with Bill Belichick, man. Like, he just never ceases to amaze me. And now he's kind of checking that last box, okay? His draft picks are playing well. It's the thing, we've, we've criticized him for drafting, right? It's Barmore, right? Uh, Stevenson, Mac Jones. Like, Mac Jones is playing well. Some people think, uh, I think Kevin Clark made a joke today, and he was like, you know, we should really be talking about him being the second pick in the draft is what he should have been. Um, and yeah, I mean, the way it looks right now, he's also in a very good situation. He made some really great throws today, though. He looked, this is probably his like signature Sunday so far this year. Touch throws, the whole nine yards in the red zone, they're going to be a problem when they, their tight ends are healthy. Hunter Henry, like free access. I think they spread him out today early in the game, and it's just too easy down there to get buckets for them. Uh, when the run game is rolling like it was today, they're hard to stop. But like, also, not just the draft picks, guys coming back to them. Like the guys they either found in free agency, Judon, like I don't even think people realized how great a signing this was gonna be. And we've mm-hmm. loved Matt Judon here, but like, I don't think we realized how dominant he was gonna look at times this year. It's just a very good fit. When Bill builds a defense around somebody, and I'm sure he slants things to that dude making plays, like because he recognizes He's their best player up front in the front seven. Van Oy, Collins coming back. They're playing well. And the identity, man, they're playing New England football. Like, offensive line playing well. Right side of line, first drive, Trent Brown, Shaq Mason. Like, really letting guys up front know it's going to be a long day. Like, when Trent Brown first hits you, you're like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> like, like, you know, sometimes the coach is like, hey, set the edge. Or like, I don't want to see you drift that once you make contact with that block. I think it's very reasonable to, in the film room, be like, what do you want me to do, coach? Most of those coaches haven't been hit like by someone like Trent before. Or leaned on, bro. He could <laughs> he could just bump into me, walk into the bathroom, and I, 
I'd sue him, dude. <laughs> I mean, so when those guys get rolling, they're hard to stop. And whether it's that or it's win pulling and kicking out uh, 44 on that touchdown early in the game on the pitch, I mean, they ran 100 reverses. That looks like them. They took away Garrett uh, defensively for, Cleve for Cleveland. And that's Bill's signature. He's going to pick one guy, and he's going to say, like, no way. That guy is not going to beat us. That's like a basketball thing, right? Like someone you know, else, like, yeah, someone else has to eat, though. Someone else on the D-line has to know, like, yo, Miles is getting triple team right now. I need to win my one-on-one. -on -one. That's got to be Clowney. That's got to be Clowney. And you know who they miss is Ogan Joby, who's now – uh, in Cincy. So, you know, like, it just plays right into who the Pats are in the defense, man. Their defense is about little things. It's about, like, energy. It's about, like, team defense. It's about turnovers, too. And they're very ball aware. Barmore, like, rushing early in the game. He's in a three. It's a little thing, and J.C. Jackson doesn't pick the ball off. He almost does. Easily could be a turnover. But that little motion of swiping at Baker's shoulder, when a lot of guys would just finish the rush and you know try to be close, is the thing that affects the throw. You know, or Kyle Van Oy on a screen, I believe it was punching the ball out. Now the Pats don't fall on that, but they do that stuff. You know, and that and that's like the little things that they do. And it reminds me of their really good defense a couple years ago. The energy today. I'm not saying they're they're that group. I think they play less man now. You know, they play more zone, but they got some playmakers and they're starting to turn into that team after Halloween or fucking Thanksgiving, what have you, all these holidays in here. They're good. We're halfway through the year and they're good. So this was a, this was a show for Bill today. How good is Chubb too? Browns look so different without him. So different. When you got a running back and get you eight yards of fucking carry, it's going to make a difference. Makes a huge difference. Oof. And the running backs, man, like, you know, Dearness Johnson, he had a pretty nice day. I'm sure Bill was like, we're not going to let him beat us either. Um, and it was all about getting him into third and long. They did that. I know that was a game plan. Had to be. Like, stop the run, make Baker convert third and eight. And ended up being third and eight. About an average just under there. Uh, Browns had a long way to go. On the other end of things, the Bucks, man, former Pats QB, heard of him, Tom Brady. What a shitty day, man. It just was uh, It was tough for them. And, and for Washington, great investment on the kicker. He, he kicked like 14 field goals today, Joey Sly. We got two quarterbacks here, and I'll describe how it went. Brady got the ball out today. Didn't get sacked, not once, right? Heineke, three seconds, took five sacks. So you look at that after a game, <clears throat> you know, and you armchair quarterback without knowing the, you know, the outcome. If I told you who the quarterbacks were, and I told you that is how the game went, you tell me that the, the Bucks rolled. Because sure. you got to hit Brady, well, you got to affect Brady. You have to take risks. I mean, that's why Heineke, and that's why a lot of quarterbacks who aren't like world beaters can go out and beat the GOAT sometimes because when you need him to make a play with his legs or like, you know, take a risk, he, you know, he's a, he's a backup or a bridge right now until he earns being a perennial starter. Like, this guy's just like, fuck it, I'm playing with house money. And I'm out here trying to beat the goat and I'm taking risks and I'm, I'm drifting to 10, 11 yards and I'm making big throws. This was all about conversions and Heineke had a ton of great conversions, like third medium type, really tough plays. That last drive. That last drive. Yeah, 19 plays, 10, 26 is the longest drive in Bucks history against them uh, since they ever like started recording stats. Pulled so, like, ever, pull ever. the Tom Brady on Tom Brady. Yeah, pretty much. In the game, clock, pretty much clock the game out. Yes, yes, dude. <laughs> and that's that's the frustrating part for Tom is like, because that's the only way you could beat him. You take the ball out of his hand. Here's the worst thing though, Washington did not sneak up on Brady. They didn't sneak up on on this team at all. Last year they played him in playoffs and played him tough. Mm -hmm. You know, so th that's the really scary thing for 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 the Bucks is you knew who they were and you let them, you know, D Denny Green. Yeah. You know, we, we let them off the hook. We let them off the hook, and they let them off the hook. And now Washington and Miami are two teams, we mentioned them earlier, who are kind of looking like this week, like the teams they were supposed to be a little bit more. I just want to say this. That last drive, dude, to, to get back on the conversion train, four of five on third downs. Mm -hmm. All of them were manageable. So 
The defense has a part in this. Brady's picks were bad. The first one was fluky. The second one, I don't know what the hell was going on. He did not have his best day. You got to put points on the board. I don't care. It's like, you know, but the defense is what worries me about this team in the playoffs. Like the corners, they're down three corners. They gave up a bunch of third downs when it mattered. The last third and five in the red zone before it became goal to go, McLaurin got smoked. <laughs> three minutes to go though. He holds onto that ball. The Bucks never really get the ball back. Mm -hmm. And so really bad drive for the Bucks because it started on the 15 yard line or something on a third and two. They're rushing five. So five guys rush and Heineke gets out around the left side. Guys are kind of jogging and, and, and you get a first down and then that entire drive happens. So I know it sucks chasing a guy like that around, but with five dudes, you gotta have the rush lanes right and then to bookend that drive with that fourth and one, which was like, and you're not gonna get the ball back to even, you know, it's tough, it's tough. So Jonathan Allen deserves a lot of credit. Straw that stirs the drink there. Um, young, out with an ACL maybe. Yeah. Fuck, I get, hope not, man. Get well yeah, get soon, well soon whatever it is. What a, what a, a balls out player he is, bro. He yeah, plays really hard. I told you like, it's been a tough year for him. He's gonna be back. He's a worker. Yeah, he, and, he, he, and just I think don't put too much on the kid too early. I, that's no, I, I think he's in a great team. situation. Yep. I think Del Rio's a, a good coach that'll yep. push him enough. And he's a player that seems like he can take constructive criticism. He can yep. take coaching well. Yep. And he's striving to get better all the time. So just wish the best. And hopefully he'll get healthy soon. And it's not too serious. He's a freak of nature. I know that. And those guys come back quicker from, from ACLs. Like Facts. I've seen dudes just come back like... In the 80s, you tore your ACL, you were done. You yeah. had to like retire. So, you know, he'll, he'll be back. The only thing about that game is the Washington football team no longer just puts the NFL shield on, the, on midfield. <laughs> conspicuously, and I'm sure there's like an article about it somewhere. I haven't done my research. So when we got back in the building, I was like, saw the score read. He was like, yeah, they're back. Like with a really concerned face. Broncos fan. I mean, not that, I don't know if he was buying the, the Broncos hype, but like, this division sounds like from looking at Reed's face and seeing the other AFC West teams today play and then seeing the score of that game, they're back. The Chiefs yeah, are back. they're back. You're, they're back. Yep. You're going to talk to your brother and my he's brother's gonna be pretty back. happy. My brother's yep. team's back. I'm happy for him then. That's good because uh, the rest of the division does not seem to be playing at a high level. And uh, they got the whole Halloween thing going where they're just like walking behind you like fast and you can't get away from them that's like probably i don't know it's there's gonna be a meme because that score i was like holy shit they figured some things out tonight huh here that the, the raiders who i defended last week going east and getting their ass kicked by the uh giants well red zone issues third down issues that sort of thing i kind of caped for them i don't know i gotta roll the tape back on this game to tell you if i think they're done or not because uh if the standard in the AFC West is the Chiefs, they've lost ground because they've always played the Chiefs close. I mean, I looked at that score. That is ugly. Joins a long line of blowouts today. Another thing that's interesting, as much as we've counted the Chiefs out and they have deficiencies, there's only one team with more wins in the AFC, and that's the Tennessee Titans. And it ain't by much. It's muddied up in the AFC now. AFC is more about depth, NFC, big ledge, top heavy. One of those teams at the top of the NFC is the Packers. One of two teams that I'd, I'd kind of put as the hottest team in the league, Titans and the Packers, because I don't look at the Aaron Rodgers weeks, week off um, in his coffin. Uh, I don't look at that as like uh, counting against them. Like they are really good to me. If you ask me right now, and I think we do this too much, where you're afraid to say what you think right now because somebody will come back in a, w a month and be like, "Well, you've changed your take." No. So look, I think I made my mind up. I, I don't have a main team right now, but I'm pretty sure that the Packers are my side team. They're your side team. Yeah, I, I am winning you over. I just enjoy watching them play, and like for whatever reason, I did not enjoy watching them play tonight. That sucked ass, dude. That was terrible. <laughs> there were like 47 punts. There were 47 punts, and I'm all about 47 punts if it's a really violent defensive game, like yeah. a Ravens-Steelers game back in the day where dudes were just like... 
But I'm getting excited because the Packers, with the weather, it snowed a little bit today. Bevel Conway. Yeah, when it's coming, like when it's coming into this time right now, yeah. and you see snow, and you see that those green or yellow uniforms, you know a lot of special things are going to happen. And this is the time of year where Green Bay usually turns it all the way up. Dude, they're, 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 <laughs> it's going to be a tough place to play. I mean, they get a little bit of snow tonight. I, I bet the under. I mean, it's totally one of the most beautiful scenes in football is to see that snow falling down in a 4 p.m. Like one of the first few 4 p.m.s at daylight savings gets it dark in the second half and you start to get some snow coming down. It was gorgeous. I'm sure Russell Wilson didn't appreciate that. A.J. Dillon. So they got a get back guy for Sean McVay, like the like the guy that <laughs> get keeps back him. Like, coach. A.J. Yeah. Dillon needs like a, a help you down from the Lambo <laughs> Leap guy because he is way too big and way too valuable to them right about now to be Lambo leaping into the fucking Again, fans. That is a big jump, but... It's a big jump. That's a big man. When you jump down onto concrete, and I don't know this concrete, but I would imagine it's not grass there yeah. where you jump down, it's really hard to plant your your, your cleats in the ground, man. Like, yeah, AJ me. Dillon's a big man, and they need him down the stretch here. Earlier, Reed was like, what do you think? Like, you know, you think they're, they're the best team in the NFC, and then right as they're panning to Aaron Jones leaving the field with a knee, I'm like, not anymore. That's my one worry. I mean, look at this uh, this stretch here. You've got all in division games. You have the Rams, you have the Ravens, you have the Browns remaining. So division games, nothing easy about those, unless you're playing the Bears, um, because they'll, they'll give it to you. <laughs> they'll just fucking give it to you. I bet the Bears the other night, They'll give it to you. And if they don't give it to you, Tony Carrenti will. Okay? So they're going to they're gonna have their hands full, except when they play the Bears the rest of the season. And they'll probably have to be without Aaron Jones for a few weeks, at least, spraying MCL. So, I mean, this team and the Titans, both two of the hottest teams in the league, are teams that are dealing with some bullshit right now. Injuries, that sort of thing. Titans, obviously... They've got to figure out different ways to win every week. Now they're without uh, Derrick Henry, uh, Julio Jones on IR, just a lot of injuries. But the thing that's carrying these two teams through is defense. The, in the past, the last couple of years, you couldn't trust the Titans' defense at times. You certainly couldn't t trust Green Bay's defense at times. Uh, and they become more physical defensively, both these teams. And they found themselves at the top of the NFC and the AFC, respectively, um, maybe the they're tied with the the Cardinals, uh, the Packers are or something like that. But these are two of the the elite teams in the league, and it's because their defense has picked up the slack of the offense. Only a couple games left, and we'll get out of here. Cowboys and Bills, uh, both blue teams out. It was like 1993 out there today. These teams are elite, uh, both of them at the same time. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, Dan Quinn revenge game. You know, he struggled defensively in Atlanta. Defense played pretty good today. Put the clamps on him. Uh, and Dak, man, happy he's healthy. I think he's going to be in the MVP combo if he's not already there. This thing is like it's cyclical, right? We had a Justin Herbert month. We had a Lamar month. He can't win now because he had a bad game. It's not the Heisman. It's not the sum of, you know, all the games you play. Having said that, I think if Dallas gets hot this month, the name will be Dak, right? And it's Thanksgiving time, bro. And that's when the Cowboys get all the pub as if they hadn't all year anyways. But you're going to be cozied up hearing a lot of Dak Prescott pieces around the holidays. And if they peak, he'll be able to ride that momentum into December. Bills, I just need to see more, dude. I just need to see more. Great, you beat the Jets. And I still trust the Bills as much as any team in the AFC. He was that quarterback, defense improve. But 24 takeaways in nine games. Okay. I don't know how you want to look at that, like they're doing something right. I always look at it like eventually you fade that, right? Eventually you're going to stop getting the turnovers. You right. know, it's law of averages. I do think that with turnovers, there is some element of, hey, what go goes up must come down. And I don't want to be there when it comes down because it's been pretty good for you and you haven't been winning every game. So 